And so there was a court argument about, well, you busted this guy because you were using infrared uh, equipment to look through the actual home itself, which should be Fourth Amendment protected. So they went back and forth on that, and I don't, I don't really think that they're still clear about it, but I know that the surveillance radar satellites have the capability of looking straight through your roofs to at least to determine how many people are there, and of course they probably can determine other structures that are inside your home as well. Now, uh, the NSA partnered with Microsoft on the, develop, on the security portions of the VISTA system. How does that make you feel? Backdoor city. That's what it's about. They'll be able to just go straight into the back of your computer and take out whatever they want and never even have to enter your location. The other thing people are concerned about is the Manchurian microchip. What the Manchurian microchip is is that all the, all the computer motherboards come from China. And unless anybody really knows how to totally analyze every chip and every architect texture of a motherboard, how do we know that the Chinese aren't in position to turn every computer off permanently if there was hostilities between us and them? Think about that for a second. A backdoor switch, a Manchurian, a Manchurian microchip to, during a period of hostilities to permanently shut off every computer that they've made, and all the computers come from that part of the world. Do you think that would turn things up and down pretty, uh, upside down pretty quick? That's almost the, y, the, the Y2K that we were sweating years ago, except it would all really go down on an overnight basis. Cable TV program charges. So every time you go into your cable TV and you order something special, they get a chance to look at those records as well. And of course, now that we've all gone digital, part of what that's all about is we're getting ready for the Big Brother telescreen. Back in the 1984 novel, Winston would have to be in his living room and the Big Brother would be on pro telling him the propaganda of the day. And there was a, a camera in the screen. And the camera would be watching at all times. So you would never know when it, you're really being watched. And Winston says, that because that's going on, you can never show any emotion. Your face has to stay motion, uh, emotionless, in which case Big Brother wouldn't have a chance to assess whether you were disagreeing with the propaganda that was coming across the screen. And I only have to tell you now, relating to that, that uh, you, know, you go to Las Vegas and you walk through the door of any major hotel, your face is scanned and it's sent to a database and you're compared instantly to all the cheats that they know of in their database. So facial recognition is, real, is the real deal. So anyway, getting back to the, uh, this digital TV switch is happening probably today or tomorrow. We're going over to digital, and the idea on the digital is that you're going to be able to do a lot more flexibility relating to two-way communication. Now, I've pulled a couple of boxes apart so far that I've gotten a chance to look at, and I'm looking for cameras and I'm looking for microphones, and they're not there yet, at least not in these very first units. But it wouldn't surprise me pretty soon, just like you have on standard equipment on a PC. You have a camera these days and you have a microphone. So pretty soon, people aren't going to be real sure whether that TV box that's sitting over there is just giving you entertainment or whether it's actually monitoring you and what's going on in your home. Automobile black box data. All the new automobiles have a black box, and it's just like the aircraft on the, that they fly that gives all the telemetry about what the automobile is doing. Some of them have different amounts of time that, that, that falls in memory. Some are 10 minutes, some are you know, maybe perhaps longer. So anything that goes on in your car where the car gets in an accident, you don't get a hold of that black box because your insurance company confiscates it out of the car. In other words, if you get an accident, the car's taken to a junkyard. The, your insurance agent is over there taking that box and they plug it in and analyze it. Internet browsing records and Google searches. Think about that for a second. Everything that you ever asked into Google could be sitting on the NSA servers. Passport and travel databases. Every place that you've gone using a passport or, and of course the new passports are going to have the RFIDs in them. 
So then your, any place that you pass that's got a reader is going to read your passport at a distance. The whole idea of that is that when you're online to pass over a border, they're going to scan you three cars back, and by the time you come up to the, uh, the customs agent, he's going to have on his screen all your information. Everybody's in the car. Now, on this list, I just want to go back to the Art Bell show. I, I said, Art, okay, these are the things that I'm concerned about. And Art, and I said, is there, do you have a problem with the government just going ahead and having these things in a database somewhere? And Art Bell shockingly said to me, he said, no, I don't have a problem with it. He said, if you're not doing anything wrong, why would you worry about it? I couldn't believe it. You know, because I thought this man was something special in terms of all that he built. And, but, you know, it's, something happened. Something happened. Uh, I don't know what happened, but something, somehow something happened. The only thing out of that list that I just read that Art Bell had an objection to was have them having his DNA. Out of that long list. And, of course, the Founding Fathers put the Fourth Amendment in place because they feel the government shouldn't have any of your information unless there's a reasonable cause that you committed a crime. There is one client that I had, and I have to tell you this one quick story, there's a client that I had in the Los Angeles area, and he was interested in uh, Muslim uh, faith. He went down to a local library and he was looking up uh, Muslim information, in Al Jazeera and a bunch, a bunch of the other stuff. He was there and, you know, the people in the library saw what he was looking at. So somebody called the... Uh, Homeland Security. And on, on, the, on this particular day, two Homeland Securities in suits show up with a street police officer from the area. And they tell the librarian, we're going to take this guy out of here. So they get him. He's sitting there with his computer linked to the library system. They fold his computer up, close it, and they take him out to a white van in the parking lot. They seize him. In other words, he's seized. They put him in the, in the van, and a technician in the van downloads his hard drive. And the other two interview him, want to know, why are you looking at this information about Muslims in these countries? He said, I'm just doing research, you know, and I have interest in blah, blah, blah. So he said, where's, the, where's your warrant for taking my hard drive? He said, oh, we didn't need a warrant. It's the Patriot Act. It's the Patriot Act. They copied his hard drive and told him, you're a naughty boy, don't look at this stuff anymore. And they, and they put, let him go back in the library with his PC. It makes me angry. Does it make you angry? Yeah. What is going on in America? <laughs> well, here's the other thing you need to know about the court system. I did want to make one more comment because I do law. This is the interesting thing that they did to us. You know, we originally had constitutional power, and when you went into courtrooms, the flag was the constitutional flag, which is the one without the fringe, because the fringe flag is the flag of the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief. But when you're in a military court, then the venue and the flag is a military flag. Now, you go anywhere in almost any public building in America, and they're flying military flags. What they did is they moved all law into contract law so that Every, everything is based on offer and acceptance. You get offered a contract for a service or anything else, and you sign the contract, and then it's, it, you're bound contractually. Now, what they've tried to do is they want to, they want to, you, for you to ex exchange your rights for privileges, driver's licenses. So what you do is you go in and you sign this one little form, but actually when you signed the form and, and made the contract with the state, you gave up your driving uh, unencumbered for now being involved with buying all the laws and regulations which in the book in California is about that thick. That's what you bought. It's called an adhesion contract. An adhesion contract means, you know, maybe one sheet saying, yeah, I want a driver's license, but the adhesion portion is that you bought the book. The whole book is now your responsibility to know relating to laws of the road and also penalties and everything else. So everything's in contract law now. And you may notice also that any time anything comes to you with your name on it, it's all in capital letters. You know, a normal flesh and blood individual's name like mine would be capital R, lowercase o-g-e-r, 
uppercase T O L C E S because when you look at the U.S. Styles Manual, the U.S. Styles Manual tells you that flesh and blood people are stated in that manner in terms of the style. But when you receive these other offers and things, it's all in capital letters, which is character characteristic of a fictitious name entity. Now, on Sunday, when you look at your newspaper and you see that there's fictitious name filings, you'll see that somebody's opening Joe's. Uh, Joe's um, hot dog stand, they will have all capital letters. And so as a consequence, what they moved this to is the status of being a fictitious name entity. You're the surety for that trust. In other words, you're like the owner of Joe's hot dog stand. But any time you get involved with courts or anything like that, they're going to address you as that fictitious entity, and therefore they can keep all of it in contract law, and you can, can't go in the court and say, Your Honor, I want to invoke my constitutional rights. Well, you can't do that because you are a fictitious entity. You're Joe's hot dog stand. Joe's hot dog stand doesn't have any, uh, any rights like that. So I just wanted to be aware to watch out for contracts. You know, I, when I have contracts put in front of me and they say I sign under penalty of perjury, I scratch it right out. I scratch out under penalty of perjury. And you can say, I declare uh, that the, you know, when you scratch it out, that the, uh, the following is true and correct. But, you know, you've got a Fifth Amendment right not to get yourself into these jams. And knowing the Constitution will really help. Okay, since I have a shorter period of time here, we're going to move forward. Uh, I want to show you this. Uh, this is one of my favorite little signs. Can you see it? Can you see it? The brainwashed never wonder. Okay, there we go. Is that working better? We made this up, and I love it. The brainwashed never want they know. Now, the nice thing about a group like this is that you're not brainwashed. You're here for the truth. You want to know things. You are not the brainwashed. At least they haven't gotten to you yet. You're still here, and, you know, that's a feather in your cap. Your brain's still operating. You don't have the question mark. You're not, you're not with the sheeple. You're not going over the cliff with the rest of the sheeple. And hopefully uh, we co-influence one another to, to be able to continue forward and do some of the things we need to do to reclaim our nation. Okay, uh, this is a cartoon. You can't read it, but uh, this is an NSA one. I love this one. He says, we're tapping your phones, analyzing your call habits. It says the NSA on his little thing here. And compiling data on your personal information to keep the bad guys from taking away your freedoms. It's a, great, it's a great little cartoon. <clears throat> Here's a chart of what the NSA is up to, and this is on the Internet, and I can give you the, uh, the, the link on this. This shows that the, the NSA has run its tentacles through all our major communication centers. So, in other words, all your ISP servers, all your phone lines, all your underground cable, all your satellite centers, are now run, tapped at those centers, fiber optics run back to the NSA headquarters. Now, the reason that this is so, so different than before, because before, in, in, in the days when we were using telephone lines, when there was a wiretap order, that wiretap order was specific to a, a particular line. And an FBI technician, and we go down to your local phone company if you were the if you were the the object of the tap, and he'd hook across your lines, and they'd take your information, and that's how a wiretap was done. But not any longer, because now they can not only tap your ISP and your email, but if you're on a voice over IP with a Magic Jack or anything else you want to use, and I love Magic Jack, uh, you will then have yourself in what's known as packet format. And in the, in the Internet and all these new technologies, packets flow together just like fish are floating in the stream. And at the other end, somewhere down the line, your packet gets separated. You know, packets are, are breakdowns of the individual moment, second to second. But yet we're all in the same stream. So when the NSA first started to attack and want to get wiretaps on individuals, they had to go in and tap the whole data stream with everybody else on there because it all flows together. So we can no longer be assured that a wiretap would tap only the person's line that was the target. And, and they used a machine called Carnivore, and what Carnivore originally was was a computer a server that they would put inside one of these main distribution 
locations, and it was in a metal cage. And they would run the ISP's main cable through the cage, and it was then looking at every email traveling during, uh, in that section of the country. So now we have to take the word from these people that they are not listening to anything other than they're supposed to.